Stanford University. Hello and welcome back to E145 Technology Entrepreneurship. This is the second video in the Venture Finance series. And in this video, I wanted to talk to you a bit more about the deal structure. And so I'm going to be going over this fairly quickly, so I encourage you to take a look at some of the uh, recommended readings on the website for more detailed information if you're interested in delving in a bit deeper into this topic. And so the two key questions that you want to have in mind as the entrepreneur going into the deal are, what percentage of the company do the investors receive for their cash? And besides this um, percentage of ownership, what are the special terms and conditions that are necessary to compensate them for the risks they're taking? And so here we are back in our venture capitalist boardroom to think a bit more about while you're going through your pitch to the uh, VC partners, what's going through their heads in terms of venture finance. So let's start with some simple examples. So imagine that here we have Roma's hot startup. And um, Roma has determined that she needs $10 million in order to form her business. And she expects from her business plan to earn about $10 million in the fifth year. At least that's what she's pitching in her presentation. Randy has a VC firm, and he's listening to Roma's pitch. He's reviewed the company's business plan, and he believes that he is entitled to an annual 50% return on his investment. Or that's at least what... Um, he's, he's expecting and perhaps what his institutional investors are expecting him to return in their fund. So if he wants to make an annual 50% return on his investment, he's thinking through what percentage he has to own in Roma startup if he's going to make an investment. So he knows that publicly traded companies in this sector tend to trade at approximately 15 times earnings. So that's the price to earnings ratio. There's also no material difference between these companies and Roma Startup, let's say. So the question, and there's two questions here. One is what portion of the company should Randy's VC firm receive today? So if he makes an investment how, uh, of this $10 million, what percentage of the company does he need to own? And the second question is what's the post money valuation of the company today after it receives the funding? So you might think this is, a little, this is a little bit backwards, that Randy as the VC should be thinking through what the current valuation of the company is and then how much uh, money the company needs to raise. And therefore, as an outcome of these two numbers, it will determine what the percentage ownership is. But this is just to point out that sometimes the calculation is actually a bit different, that we're working backwards from a percentage equity ownership to a current valuation that, that would give that percentage equity ownership. And so see if you can calculate uh, ahead of time before I give you the answers, what the value of this VC investment is going to be in year five. So what formula do we need here? What the startup's uh, valuation is gonna be in year five. And then what the VC firm's share is today. And then the post money valuation. Okay, so let's take a look. Okay, so this is what you should have come up with. The, the value of the VC investment in year five has to be 76 million. This is because the investment in the beginning is $10 million, and then this is the formula for calculating that there must be a 50% annual return on the investment over five years. The startup's value in year five is going to be the $10 million earnings times the industry PE ratio of 15. So $10 million times earnings times the PE ratio of 15 should yield a startup valuation of 150 million total. The VC firm share today, if the firm is going to be worth 150 million, the VC investment share is going to be 76 million, that's approximately 50% that they're going to own. And so then the post money valuation today is going to be the 10 million divided by 50%, a $20 million post valuation. And so in order for the VC investor to wind up owning 50%, if they need to put in 
$10 million today, then they're essentially giving a pre-money valuation of $10 million. And so then the post-money valuation is that $10 million pre-money valuation plus the $10 million that the VC is putting in, so that yields a post-money valuation of $20 million. So let's go through another example. And so this example is of the multiple stages of um, funding and dilution that the typical entrepreneurial firm goes through. And so you might imagine a startup going in has three founders, and they're going to divide up the shares, the equity ownership in the company, into three million shares. And so each founder is going to get exactly one third of the ownership of the company. So we can uh, talk later about whether this might make sense for the owner, for the founders to divide up the shares evenly. But imagine everyone gets a million shares for each founder. And so perhaps the valuation is currently $3,000. Each one of the founders has put in $1,000, or a valuation of $3,000 total. Now let's say a little bit of time goes by. They've reduced some risk. They've created some value. They want to bring in a CEO and also carve out part of the equity for um, stock options for, for early employees. So let's imagine now, because they've reduced some risk and created some value, the startup is now worth 50000 We create another um, 1 million shares each for the CEO and for the early employees. So we're creating an additional 2 million shares total, so now there's 5 million shares. There's 5 million shares and the total valuation is 50000 Each share, instead of being worth a tenth of a penny, each share is now worth a penny. So let's imagine that the founders have now decided that they need to raise some venture capital. And so they need to go out and they need to raise five million dollars. So they're going to have to generate some more shares for the venture capital firm that's going to invest. And so let's say at this point the venture capital firm invests this five million dollars, an additional five million shares are created, so we have a total of 10 million shares now. And because some additional value has been created and additional risk has been reduced, each of these shares is now worth a dollar apiece. And so even though the founders have gone from owning one third of the shares each to 20% each, and now at this stage, each founder only owns 10% of the company, the size of the pie has continued to grow because value has continued to be created. And so for this founder, even though he's been diluted to only owning 10%, because the shares are now worth a dollar a piece, this founder, their shares are now worth $1 million. As opposed to at the very beginning when their um, 1 million shares were only worth $1,000. So we're going to use some of this money from the VCs to conduct some additional R&D, continue to develop the product, maybe start to develop a second product. Um, let's see what happens. So before we move on, one key question here, if the post-money valuation of the firm at this stage, stage three, is now $10 million, what was the pre-money valuation? So this is very simple to answer because if the post-money valuation is $10 million and 5 million shares have been created, the VCs now own 50%, the pre-money valuation must have been $5 million. And so, in essence, the value of the company increased from $50,000 to $5 million at this stage, and then when the VCs decided to invest their money, they essentially gave the startup firm a pre-money valuation of $5 million. They invested another $5 million, so the post-money valuation is $10 million. So this is all to get you into the habit of thinking about these terms that we tend to use in venture finance, a pre-money valuation, post-money valuation. So let's imagine we move forward a couple of steps. An additional round of funding was raised for marketing. The valuation of the firm went up, the size of the over, overall pie continues to grow, 
but as we bring in a second round of VCs and generate additional shares for them, the percentage equity ownership continues to get diluted for the founders. We now reach the stage of an IPO. This is an initial public offering to the general public in terms of uh, the New York Stock Exchange or NASDAQ. Um, we're now going to generate another 5 million shares for sale to the public through the IPO. And so um, the shares, there's now a total of 20 million shares. And the shares are priced at $15 each in the IPO when, when the shares go on sale. The public has to pay $15, $15 each per share. So 20 million shares at $15 each gives the company a valuation of $300 million. And so you can then calculate that even though the founders now only own 5% of the company as opposed to starting out with 33%, their 5% share is now worth significantly more. And so this is essentially the, the trade-off. You're trading, giving up some percentage equity ownership in the company, some control for additional resources that you need to continue to grow the overall size of the pie. And so I just want to point out a little bit more about the language of venture finance. There are three different ways that you can think about the overall market cap, the overall valuation of the company. You can think about it in terms of what's the net income of the company and then what's the typical price to earnings ratio in that industry. So if you have a net income of 10 million and a price to uh, PE ratio of 30, then the market cap, the valuation of the company is going to be 300 million. Similarly, we could calculate this from the share price. If we have a share price of $15 and there are 20 million shares outstanding, then 15 times 20 gives you a $300 million valuation. Then the third way is um, from the sales. Um, you, might have, um, you might have $100 million in sales, PS ratio of 3, which then gives a $300 million valuation to the company. So let me pause there, and in the next video I want to dig in a bit more on the economics of the VC firm, how VC firms are structured, and how you should think about your pitch and the process of raising money from venture capitalists. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.